If you're in the market for a new midsize off-road ready SUV, you're probably asking yourself this question. Should I get the all new 2024 Lexus GX 550 Overtrail or should I get the all new Toyota Land Cruiser? We're gonna compare both and then put them to the test right now on Driving Sports TV. Welcome to the Driving Sports TV Peninsula Proving Grounds. Today we have a classic shootout as we compare two of the most popular off-road ready SUVs for 2024. This is the all-new Lexus GX550 Overtrail, and that is my personal 2024 Land Cruiser First Edition. It's got like 200 miles on it, I've barely driven it. <laughs> Both have full-time four-wheel drive, a 112.2-inch wheelbase, a boxy form factor with room for five. They're also both made at the same factory in Japan. But once you look past the skin-deep similarities, these are two very different vehicles, both in terms of content as well as capability. Driving the Land Cruiser on the street is kind of like what you might expect. It's a relatively soft and a little bit of a floaty experience. The steering feel is pretty light, but this is just overall a really nice, comfortable place to be. I mean, you can easily imagine just chewing up thousands of miles from behind this wheel. On the street, there are only three drive modes. You get Sport, Eco, and Normal. And pretty much all they do is adjust the throttle. That's it. <laughs> This vehicle is my personal Land Cruiser First Edition, and I kind of love everything about it, from the two-tone historic paint job to the hybrid powertrain. This setup produces 326 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. The heart of the four-wheel drive system in both this Land Cruiser and the GX550 is a Torsen differential. That means this is a full-time four-wheel drive setup. I don't have to tell it if I want four-wheel drive. Further, it's a rear bias setup, so this feels sporty when I'm putting in the throttle. It's a nominal 40-60 split, but it can vary depending on needs. So in short, this thing is actually just a joy to drive. The tech is good. The driving is fun. And of course, it just has loads of room both for people as well as cargo. So is this GX any different? You might be surprised. Obviously, these two vehicles are very similar in terms of layout. We got our mode select here, MTS and crawl. Down here, we have the center torsen and lock, rear lock, as well as high-low. The materials seem pretty much on par between these two vehicles. The biggest difference here is this 14-inch display versus the smaller display in the Land Cruiser but the effective usable screen real estate is basically the same because the whole bottom third of this display is just climate control. So clearly one of the biggest changes between these two vehicles is this twin turbo V6 and it is phenomenal. It is a 3.4 liter unit. It produces a peak 349 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. So it is more than the hybrid four in the Land Cruiser, but not by a lot. But numbers don't tell you the full story here because when I hit the throttle, power, oh yeah. <laughs> this thing pulls and pulls all the way through the gauge. It is fantastic, and it makes nice noises too. The noises also change if I go into Sport Plus mode because, oh, is it fake? Yeah, probably, but that's okay. It sounds awesome. Because of their choice to go with a twin turbo six here and they have slightly upsized front brakes, this vehicle can tow up to 9,000 pounds, whereas the Land Cruiser can only tow up to 6,000 pounds. There is a downside to the twin turbo, of course, and that's economy. On our standard mountain pass test cycle, we averaged 17 miles to the gallon with this GX550 Overtrail. We haven't yet done that route with the Land Cruiser because it's still getting broken in at this time of filming, but I expect we'll see north of 20 miles to the gallon once we're done. So this engine is fantastic, but it's not the powertrain for me that really makes the difference between these two vehicles. 
it's the suspension. And that's what I think you're really paying for in this vehicle. Both vehicles are independent up front and have solid axle coil springs in the rear. But where the Land Cruiser has passive dampers, the GX550 here uses adaptive dampers. That means you can adjust the ride depending on your drive mode. But there's more. The GX Overtrail Edition also has the Electronic Kinetic Dynamic Suspension System, or EKDSS. This allows the GX to provide maximum stability on the street, but it also will disconnect both front and rear sway bars automatically when taking it off-road. EKDSS is an improvement over the older KDSS because this new system is active. It's controlled by computers and sensors. The old system found on the previous generation GX, as well as an option on the 4Runner TRD Off-Road, was a hydraulic passive system. That is a lot of words to simply say that this GX has excellent street manners. Plus, I can pop it over into Sport Plus and Woo! Makes great noises too! <laughs> yeah, they're probably fake, but I don't care, they sound awesome. But sometimes it's not just the big things that can help you make a decision, it's the little ones. And there's a lot of little differences between these two vehicles. To control the aircon, the Land Cruiser uses real buttons and switches. The GX integrates them into the 14-inch touchscreen. In the second row, the GX550 Overtrail has vents in the center. The Land Cruiser places them above. My kids have spent hot days in both vehicles, and they vastly prefer the setup in the Land Cruiser. The trunk area of the GX is larger. Because the Land Cruiser is a hybrid, it has to put the batteries under the floor, and that raises it up, reducing cargo capacity. The Land Cruiser gets a 12.4-inch touchscreen, but the actual working space is identical to the larger screen on the GX which is kind of funny. I do, however, like the climate knobs on the Lexus. Those are still cool. To change vehicle settings, the Lexus puts them into the touchscreen. The Land Cruiser manages all the settings in the gauge cluster. And both vehicles have large digital gauge clusters, but on the Land Cruiser, you can modify the layout and options while driving. The Lexus locks you out as soon as you put it in drive. Both vehicles come with what they call 33-inch all-terrain tires, but I would say that's only true on the GX, which has Nitto Terra Grapplers. The Land Cruiser has Michelin LTX Trails, which are basically just all seasons. AC power is standard on both vehicles, but the Land Cruiser's hybrid system allows for 2,400 watts of output, where the Lexus can only output up to 400 watts. For a more direct comparison, this Land Cruiser First Edition squares up against the Overtrail Plus, which is the top trim on the Overtrail line. We filmed one of those earlier this year. Even though they are priced pretty comparably, if you just look at them on the website, when you actually drill down into the features, the Land Cruiser does come with a lot more standard hardware that you have to pay extra for on the Lexus. This particular Overtrail Plus that we tested did come loaded with the optional traffic jam assist, heads-up display, digital key, premium sound, and a cool box. It was priced at $81,305 US dollars, including destination. All Overtrail trims only come with synthetic leather seats, but this Plus did include massage units, which was a nice touch. The Land Cruiser First Edition that I bought with those same features is priced at $77,275 US dollars, including destination. No massage seats, but it did include rock rails, roof rack, and a real leather interior along with a dash cam. Add rock rails and a proper roof rack to the Lexus, and it will cost an additional $2,000, making the price difference about $6,000 more for the GX. Of course, yes, there are cheaper GX and Land Cruiser options, and the way they're packaged makes direct comparison across the line a bit difficult. But with only three trims at launch for the Toyota versus six for the GX, there is a wide range of pricing and options available. But just like previous generations of the GX, that nose, as pretty as it is, is going to be a hindrance when going off-road. It looks amazing, but with a 26 degree approach angle, you're gonna have trouble getting over stuff. The standard and first edition Land Cruisers have a much better approach angle at 32 degrees. Breakover and departure angles are a bit better on the Toyota as well. Of course, the differences go even deeper, like the GX has EKDSS, and the Land Cruiser has a disconnectable sway bar. And of course, one is a hybrid, the other a twin-turbo six. So which one is better when you're going off-road? 
Well, luckily, we're here at our Peninsula Proving Grounds, and that's exactly what we do here. So, let's take this one off-road. Let's see how this rig does on a forest road at speed. So this is our main line down the middle, and it's a little bumpy. I want to take it at about 30 miles per hour, and I want to see how this suspension behaves. Let's first do Sport Plus, because that will set up these adaptive dampers to be as stiff as possible. Let's get up to 30 miles an hour. Punch it! Okay, and there's 30. Go over the bump. Boop! Whoa! That had a bit of a launch. <laughs> Now let's try it with comfort mode. Same speed, same road, everything the same. Let's get up to 30. And there's 30. And whoop, whoa, 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 whoa. Wow, okay. Bit of a launch there. <laughs> Did not expect it to be that dramatic. let's try out the off-road tools that we have here in this GX. The interesting thing about EKDSS is you don't have to do anything. It just automatically will disconnect the front and rear stabilizer bars, giving you more articulation when you need it. So that's nice. I am going to go ahead and switch it into four low though. Got to switch it into neutral. And when I do, I get my trail camera up front here, which is great. And uh, that's basically all I need to do. Let's just go ahead and start driving. I absolutely love the visibility in this vehicle. I can see down the sides, my camera fills in all of the gaps. It's just such a nice vehicle to off-road in because you can just kind of see where everything is. Around the corner here. So now this is where articulation starts to come into play. It should be able to reach down there with that front wheel by disconnecting automatically the EKDSS system. And the neat thing about EKDSS over the old KDSS system is it can disconnect the four corners independently. The old system used hydraulics, so you couldn't have as much detailed control over the release and re-engagement of the sway bars as you can with this new system. Okay, so on this section, we're gonna reach down with the driver front wheel have a little articulation going on here. Now, I'm not doing anything except I'll turn on MTS. Let's do that, MTS Auto. We'll see how it shifts power around the system. It's working, it's working. Yeah, it gets us up and out, no problem. Ha. <laughs> the fact that this also has like decent all-terrain tires helps a lot. It's gonna breeze through the moguls here and we will be flipping around and coming back and they're definitely more challenging going uphill. So this is just fun. Oh, come on, oh, I actually hung up there for a moment. Yeah, we got through. So both this and the Land Cruiser have a cool party trick and it's because of the Torsen center differential. Let me show you. Unlike a part-time system like you would find in the 4Runner, um, all models except for the Limited, that one will lock the front and the back, which actually makes tight turns very difficult. But because this has that torsion and center diff, I can fully crank it even in four low, and it works brilliantly. Just look at that. Look at that. And of course, if I do need to lock it for more capability, I just hit the button down there. Very easy. So on the return trip here, let's just crawl forward here in four low with MTS on auto. Now with the multi-terrain select system, of course, I have all sorts of different settings I can use. Auto, sand, mud, rock, and then there's some additional ones in four high as well. But for this right now, I'm just gonna keep it on auto. Now you can see articulation here. Oh, this is where it's trying to get traction. Whoa! <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and switch on the rear locker and center locker, and let's see how quickly those engage. 
Oh, they engaged pretty quick there. Went right on. Nice. Those wheels are definitely not reaching all the way down. It'll be interesting to see if the Land Cruiser has more articulation with its disconnectable front sway bar than the EKDS system has. Okay, final obstacle. So for this section, let's use the crawl control system because we haven't used it yet. Uh, this uses both braking and power to be able to crawl through challenging obstacles. And it also uses the MTS system to shift power around. Now, neat thing with both this and the Land Cruiser is I can actually go back to MTS, select what mode I want, and then go back to crawl and it'll lock that mode in. You can kind of stack your commands, which is pretty neat. So I'm just gonna put MTS back on auto though. And then we'll go back to crawl and I'll keep that speed down to zero. This does give me way too many messages though. I'll have to like constantly be clearing messages, which is kind of annoying. Anyway, let's crawl forward and see what we got. So we're gonna put that passenger front wheel in the same hole that we originally drove into on the way down. Reach down, see if it lifts that rear tire or if the rear tire can reach all the way down. Of course, better articulation in the front also means that we don't lift things quite so often in the back. Okay, pretty easy. I mean, like, didn't even notice it was there. <laughs> Not sure. Let's do that line a little bit deeper here. Let's go in reverse. Let's see how this system works in reverse. Can you crawl control in reverse? Crawl control works in reverse. I had no idea. That's cool. Okay, well now let's put it into drive again. <laughs> Neat. Uh, and we'll let this go all the way in the hole. I want to get that back wheel all the way in the hole too. So let's go straight here. And then we'll go in the hole. And then, yeah, there we go. Felt a little bit of air there in one of the wheels. Cool. And then even with crawl, I can add throttle or I can add brake as necessary. It doesn't mind. You know, overall, very impressed with this new GX. It does everything that the old one did. It just does it better. Crawl control is quiet. MTS is quiet. Everything is quiet and it works. And then of course the new EKDSS system um, is supposed to be better than the old one. Personally, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, I just know that it worked and we had articulation when we needed it and we had a nice firm cornering ride on the street. So overall, very happy with this GX. So now let's see not just how well this Land Cruiser does on the trail, I'm really curious how well it'll do on that 30 mile per hour access road because thick suspension. Is it going to bob as much as this one did? Let's find out. On this road at about 30 miles an hour, the GX had a lot of bounce, both in Sport Plus as well as in Comfort. Now let's see what the Land Cruiser's one-size-fits-all suspension can do. Going to get up to 30 miles an hour pretty promptly, hold it at 30, hit the bounce, and boom. Whoo! <laughs> it triggered the dash cam, but that was very smooth. So it's interesting, this Land Cruiser is so much better on a road like that. And at least, I don't know about what the roads are like in your area, but out here in the West, yeah, we have a lot of roads just like that one. With this trail we have here, we can test out the off-road capabilities of this vehicle. Now what I'm gonna do is go to neutral, I'm gonna shift to four low, automatically turns on my trail camera, which is really cool. I even get little inclinometers at the bottom there, though it really only shows me where 30 degrees is, as well as 10 degree increments. It's, I kind of wish it would give me real numbers, but uh, you know, better than nothing. Go back into drive, and now I'm in four low. Yeah, and away we go. I'm gonna go ahead and also turn on MTS. So automatic MTS is turned on. You hit the button and it turns on the auto braking system uh, to automatically shift power side to side. If I want to, I can fine tune that by selecting different modes. You get different modes depending on if you're in four high or four low. Uh, this one, because I'm in low right now, I get auto, sand, mud, and rock. I love the visibility in this vehicle. I can see where the ledges are on this little ridge road. Uh, and then the camera gives me even more details. So at this point, 
I'm gonna go ahead and get that wheel in the hole here. And I wanna see if I can now disconnect the anti-sway bar. On a uh, Jeep Wrangler, you couldn't do that here because the Wrangler requires you to be completely flat or pretty close to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect. Tells me it's disconnected. Okay, no big deal. Disconnected just as quick as it would normally. Down. Okay, now up here is our first real challenge. It's a hole on a sandy surface. So something that's interesting is on the GX550, the EKDSS system uh, places the front stabilizer bar in front of the axle, right behind the bash plate. Now to me, that does not seem like a very safe place to put it. On the Land Cruiser here, the disconnectable front sway bar is actually located behind the axle where it's, you know, more protected. So at this point, I'm actually gonna lock the center, which kind of puts us in the same kind of configuration as a part-time four-wheel drive system, because when you put that into four high, it basically locks the front and the back together. Uh, by hitting this button, it locks that center torsen. So now power is going equally front and back. And then I'm also going to lock that rear locker. And then they're both flashing, so they haven't engaged yet. Drive forward. They usually want, okay, center has engaged, rear has engaged. And then up we go and over. So smooth, love it. Now I could have used MTS there, um, but I used MTS on the last video where I used this vehicle versus the Forerunner. So I just kind of wanted to give you a variation in how to attack that kind of obstacle. I'm just gonna go through these moguls. These will be more complicated once we flip around and come back. Right now, they're just kind of fun. <laughs> right. And then we go into the bowl. And just like on the GX, I can unlock that center torsen. What does it want me to do? It wants me to turn the back one off first. Okay, that's fine. I have to say the um, the messages are not terribly clear. Okay, the back finally disconnected, middle disconnected. Now I can make that tight turn even in four low, just like on the GX. Now with a Forerunner TRD Pro, you can't do this because four low automatically is locked because it just has a transfer case in the middle. Okay, now let's go up and out of those moguls. So going up, can I just lock the rear? Nope, it will not let me lock the rear diff by itself. I have to lock the center first and then lock the rear and then roll forward a little bit. And now it's locked. I'm gonna go through, my stabby bar is still disconnected. Very smooth. I love just how quiet this is. It is incredibly quiet. Nice. Now in this section, let's use crawl control. So here we're gonna go ahead and use crawl control, which will use power and braking to automatically move the vehicle forward. And I can do that with center and rear diffs locked. I mean, so it's kind of, this is the Hulk version of the vehicle right now. This is all features doing their stuff to get through what is not terribly difficult, but uh, will definitely challenge articulation. Crawl is on, drive is on. Now I take my foot off, I dial it into the speed that I want. There we go, crawl at the lowest speed setting. And now I can just focus on driving and not have to worry about uh, throttle or braking. It just does it. If I want to, I can always, of course, always put the brake on. Take my foot off the brake and we move forward. <laughs> now it's gonna stress the articulation on the front there, but yeah, no problem. This vehicle makes off-roading so incredibly easy. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and disable crawl control and we'll drive out. Nice. When I first saw the all-new GX550 
and the Land Cruiser was first announced, I kind of thought that they would be very similar. And they are in many ways. But I'm actually really surprised now that I've driven both back to back, both on the street and on a trail, at how different they are. And neither one is bad in any particular area. They're both very, very good. But my simplified advice would be this if you're shopping both of these. The GX550 Overtrail is better on the street. That twin turbo V6 produces so much punch and the KDSS system just makes it effortless to go from street to trail and back again without even having to think twice about it. However, this Land Cruiser is more competent off-road in my opinion, and that is because of the hybrid power system produces more power at zero RPM. It just allows for a silky smooth crawl mode. Plus with the Land Cruiser, you simply have better geometry. You're going to get over obstacles without crunching your underside, and that is critical. And for me, what I want is a machine that is better off-road. So my choice of this Land Cruiser, yeah, it's a perfect fit. In either case, you're getting the latest in technology, style, and capability. And also keep in mind, yes, these are both luxury vehicles, so neither one is cheap. But that old Land Cruiser from a couple years ago, that 200 series they sold in the US, it went for more than $90,000. So this being just a little bit smaller is actually a lot less expensive. If you think about it, it also has more capability. So I think it's a win-win. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthat. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos. We make them for you. I hope you enjoy them, and I really hope you enjoy this shootout. Now, which one would you pick? Post a comment below. Or if you just wait for the new 4Runner, post that too.